My name's Wick. Um, I'm trained as a neuroscientist and kind of self-taught as a game dev. Um, I've been kind of like working on games as a hobby for the last like, I don't know, 10 years. Um, but only really started doing it seriously last year uh, with the Kickstarter um, for my most recent game, Crescent Loom. The kind of idea behind Crescent Loom was uh, when I was working in my neuroscience lab, uh, I had a really hard time kind of like visualizing the sort of stuff I was being taught, um, where you have all of these like diagrams with like one cell connected to another cell and then you show the next frame being like, okay, when this is activated, this is inactivated, and it's like just a very clunky system. Games are great at showing dynamic systems, um, so I decided to make a game about it. The uh, design of the game um, is a lot like um, Spore, where you're building these underwater creatures. Um, you're kind of putting their bones and muscles and stuff together. Uh, but then instead of just like having typical video game controls where you press the arrow keys to move around, you have to actually wire up a realistic brain to get it to actually swim. And that, that like sounds scary, but like the basics of neuroscience are actually pretty simple. And you just like can know that this thing turns on and off. If you connect it to this muscle, this muscle moves back and forth. And by giving people these basic parts, um, I let them build these like fantastic underwater creatures. Well, it's kind of funny. This game has been designed before, like probably dozens of times, like throughout the last couple decades, except every time it's been designed, it's been about robots, uh, where you put a robot together and then program it to like move through a level or something. And that's that's been designed just like over and over. And like the oldest one I know about is like Robot Odyssey, which I think was in the 70s or 80s. But I think the reason that that has been the case um, is because most game developers come into like design and stuff um, with kind of a math or engineering background. Um, so I feel like I'm just taking this thing that has already been like well trodden and, and like very well um, polished and then just bring this new kind of background, neuroscience, into it. Um, so I think like having a different background is the thing that basically made the game. The art style is just like all very plain, um, like straight edged, uh, plain color polygons. Um, and that's because I'm not a technical artist. And I don't know how to like use lots of um, like I don't know how to use Unity. So it's kind of me taking my limitations, um, my technical limitations, and trying to make an aesthetic out of those. One of my design philosophies or design pillars is accessibility. By using kind of really simple cartoon graphics, it makes it very approachable. I guess what has struck me about the game, and that I wasn't expecting, where I was building it more or less for myself when I started, being like, okay, this will be for other people who are learning about neuroscience to just visualize this thing. But when I've taken it to conventions, um, like, kids love this thing. Like, they're just like, ah, oh, I get to create a creature! And they, they're they just, like, putting spine pieces, like, in these, like, crooked, like, crazy circular formations and, like, fins everywhere and, like, eyes inside of mouths. And, like, they get really into it. And when they're excited about stuff, the neuroscience just, like, becomes almost an afterthought where they are like, okay, how do I get this thing that I created to come to life? Um, and when they're motivated like that, it's just really amazing to see them pick up these things that usually uh, you don't learn about until like grad school. So that's been really <laughs> exciting. Here at Stugan, I'm trying to turn it from the sandbox that I've created over the last year into like kind of a full-fledged game. So I'm doing things like adding a better tutorial, um, adding challenges for people to kind of like make creatures to overcome. I guess here at Stugan, I'm just focusing on the tutorial. Stugan is beautiful. I'm so happy to be here. Everybody's just so nice. The last like week and a half has just been amazing and like finding a community and finding people who are like talking um, kind of like on the same page with me about like all these designs. Then I can be like, oh, like, you know how like Spec Ops line criticized violence in video games this way? And everyone's like, oh yeah, okay, that. Um, and then like they'll add their own reference and like having the discussions here, I've just never found it anywhere else. And it's just really incredible. After Sugan, like I said, I need to create some, like a better gameplay loop. Um, I'm aiming for eventually uh, Steam early access. 
Um, but in order to make that happen, I need to make sure that it's way more bug-free than it is. Um, so I need to really get my technology down um, and just like give people more directed things to do. Because if I bring it to Steam, um, people are expecting like five to 20 hours of gameplay probably. And the timeline for that depends on funding. I'm currently working part-time as a um, web developer in San Francisco, um, just like three days a week and then the other four to three days on Crescent Loom. Um, so I'll continue doing that if I don't find some other source of funding, like a government grant I've been trying to work on, um, or potentially a publisher, if I find, found the right partner. So you can find me on Twitter at WickGlyph, um, and you can find Crescent Loom at crescentloom.com. Thanks for watching.